Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I didn't expect such a large crowd. Um, anyway, again, my name is John McConnell, the CEO. I've been CEO of Victoria for, uh, I think, uh, nine years now, and uh, it's been a great run. And we finally have something to talk about. Um, this is a fairly busy slide, but the two most important bullets are in the top left there. Uh, number one, we're in construction. We're more than 90% complete. And we've got a big uh, milestone coming up here in September. We'll be pouring our first gold. Second bullet, um, in production, we'll be producing 200,000 ounces of gold per year at an all-in sustaining cost of less than 750. If you use 1250 gold, that's a $500 margin for every ounce we produce times 200,000 ounces. This little company will be cash flowing 100 million per year in full production. Where we're located, we're in Canada's Yukon Territory, geographically roughly in the center. And most people assume if you're in the Canada's north, you lack infrastructure. We actually enjoy good infrastructure. We have a paved highway within 40 kilometers of the project site. We've built an all-weather gravel road into the site, so we have year-round road access. We've also just completed a power line along that road and tied into Yukon Energy's grid. Uh, so we'll have uh, low-cost hydroelectric power for the life of the mine. Community of Mayo is 65 kilometers to the south. It's a small community, but importantly has a full-service airport. Currently, there are seven SCED flights a week from the capital of Whitehorse to Mayo. Um, I'm not going to go through this uh, slide. Uh, what I'm going to do is show you a video. I hope the video will give you a sense of the scope of this mine. It's a very large mine. Uh, you know, we'll be mining over 60,000 tons a day of ore and waste. Uh, processing over 30,000 tons a day. So big mine, over 90% completed on the construction. That's the road up to the uh, open pit. It's all Caterpillar equipment. You can see a cat 150 ton haul truck here. That's a CAT 6040 shovel, has a bucket capacity of 50 tons, Caterpillar drills. And we're getting set for a blast on the uh, 1285 bench. Everybody loves the blast. Now we'll swing around to the primary crusher. Crushers are essentially complete. We've uh, commissioned it unloaded. Um, we're building the uh, an MSE wall up behind it to give access to the crusher. It's actually complete now, and we'll start uh, commissioning with rock next week. There's a conveyor system out to the core source stockpile. One of the transfer towers. Here we're putting the belting on the conveyor over to the secondary crusher. This is the building that houses the secondary and tertiary crushers. Those crushers are all in place, the screen decks are in place, and we'll start commissioning there uh, uh, early in June. This is a conveyor from the tertiary crusher across the valley to the leach pad. It's 1.7 kilometers long. There you can see the uh, end and goes from there into stackers into that leach pad. Um, the uh, leach pad's lined for the first two years of production. Here we're doing uh, the lining for the 
third to fifth year of production. I wish the guys moved that quickly. That's the bottom bowl. There you can see the pregnant leach solution pumping system. That's an event pond there, that large pond in case of flooding. We actually have capacity for a 10,000 year flood. This is inside the gold recovery plant. That plant is uh, complete now and we've started uh, commissioning with water. Should also talk about our safety record. We're now uh, over 1.2 million man hours without a lost time accident. I think that's unprecedented in the mining business, never mind the construction business. Um, so why would you invest in Victoria? Uh, it's because of the producer re-rate and I'm sure you've all seen this slide in some form or another in the past. I first saw it uh, in a presentation uh, um, at a Franco Nevada night in Vancouver. Basically, Pierre was saying that uh, there's two times to invest in a junior miner. Uh, one is at the discovery phase, and there's obviously thousands of companies at this phase, and it's you know difficult to find the one that's going to make the dis uh, discovery. The next is uh, when a company's moving from producer or from developer to producer. Clearly, Victoria is in that uh, category. Um, and we should uh, experience a re-rate as we move forward into production. If you don't believe the uh, chart, here's some real life examples. Uh, Torex, Roxgold, Predium, uh, TMAC, Atlantic. You can see their share prices uh, when they started construction, share price when they achieved commercial production, and you see an increase or a re-rate anywhere from 38% to 161%. And certainly in the case of Atlantic, you probably saw the takeover offer they received or have agreed to. I think it was at 250 a share. So uh, they're the uh, example we all want to follow. Um, another way of looking at the re-rate is... Uh, you know, market value per average annual ounce of production. You can see where uh, Victoria is there in the pre-production phase. Now, will we re-rate to the level of a Lasser? Uh, potentially, uh, Turkey isn't exactly a safe jurisdiction anymore, but uh, certainly a double from where we are today is uh, very likely. Um, five analysts cover the stock and coincidentally they all have a doubling of our share price uh, over the next 12 months as well. Um, shareholding uh, with the project financing, Orion and Osisco became large shareholders of Victoria, but Sun Valley, Electrum and Kinross have been there with us for more than five years. And I think we have a real blue chip group, uh, you know, that's around between 0.4 and 1.4% there in Oppenheimer, Investec, RBC, SSI, and Gabelli. Personally, I own just uh, under 7 million shares, uh, so I certainly have skin in the game. And I should point out that those are shares I've purchased in the market. We didn't IPO this company, so we didn't give ourselves a bunch of uh, penny stock at the beginning. Our chairman also owns over 3 million shares, and uh, Sean Rusin recently joined our board, and the first thing he did was buy a million shares in the market. So just to conclude, uh, why would you invest in Victoria? Number one, we're fully financed. Number two, uh, you know, the project's been validated by Cisco and Orion. They've made big bets on uh, Eagle, and they did over a year of due diligence before they made their investment. There's potential for a share price re-rate. 200,000 ounces of gold per year is meaningful. Um, for an example, uh, if an Agnico Eagle were to acquire Victoria, that would increase their annual production by 14%. We have great exploration targets. I didn't go into that because of the time. Um, 
We also, uh, you know, will move towards year-round stocking as we get comfortable with uh, working in the cold. That could increase the annual production to over 240,000 ounces per year. And finally, I'm not a gold bub bug, but uh, I do feel there's potential for gold to move up uh, over $1,400 uh, over the next 12 months. And that would be perfectly timed for Victoria going into production. Thank you, and I think we might even have time for a question. <laughs> it was 500 million Canadian, 400 million U.S. All right, thank you very much. Uh